Hi guys, it's Mandy here. So today I wanted to expand on this conversation about Peter Dinklage's views on the dwarves and I wanted to sort of go into what these actual dwarves are. Um, I wanted to actually explain to everyone how his viewpoint about the dwarves is first of all incorrect and stereotypical in its own right because he seems to think that these dwarves are stereotyped. Firstly, I don't see any stereotype in them other than the fact that he seems to think that the way they dress, maybe what their occupation is, and the way they live is stereotypical. First of all, here's the quote that Peter Dinklage says. I was a little taken back. You're still telling me the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. It makes no sense to me. You're progressive in one way, but you're still making that effing backwards story about seven dwarves living in a cave together. What the F are you doing, man? Have I done nothing to advance the cause from my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. That's the quotation from Peter Dinklage. Okay, guys, so now with that in mind, let's just take a look at the dwarves, okay? So Peter Dinklage thinks these dwarves are stereotyped. I just want to know what exactly is so stereotypical about them other than the fact that they're dwarves. What is so stereotypical about them? Because they are, first of all, they're set in the, the early 19th century, probably even earlier than that, seventh, let's say 18th century, late 18th century, early 19th century sort of period, uh, set in Germany. So let's take a look at the clothing then, shall we? Let's say, yes, it's stereotypical of the late 18th century Germany attire. What's so stereotypical is it maybe the hat. Well, here's some hats from that period that people used to wear. Uh, actually, it wasn't just in Germany. People used to wear them all over Europe. Um, actually, they became quite synonymous with the symbol of freedom in France. So not stereotypical of dwarves, actually very stereotypical of the time period. Very stereotypical of the time period and of the status of the dwarves. They were workmen. And if Peter Dinklage thinks that them being workmen is stereotypical, well, I might point out that there were dwarves who worked in the courts, but they were actually perceived as worse than workmen because of the fact that they were used as entertainment so that would actually have been worse you know so it's not stereotypical for dwarves to be workmen actually these dwarves were very good craftsmen they weren't just miners who lived in a cave here's the cottage that they lived in presumably these men got together after a long time working uh, in mines and they decided to create a little commune of men and they went and lived together in a, in a forest, isolated probably because they didn't want to be um, looked down on or used or particularly picked off as freaks. So they probably went and isolated themselves and lived comfortably uh, together in a, in a little commune together. And they probably built that house uh, with their own hands. So there you go, an example of their, their craftsmanship, I would say very likely and they obviously found this mine that they they all like to work in they like to work in it otherwise they wouldn't because they don't have a stereotypical master slave driver ruling them they come and go as they please they mine as they please they craft as they please and they they're absolutely free they're free men so for peter dinklage to say they're stereotypical stereotypical of what may i ask stereotypical of good craftsmen who during that period wore the attire of that period, who were free men, who were actually quite wealthy due to the fact that they were mining jewels, which presumably they would go and sell. So what exactly is so negative in that stereotype? There's nothing negative. Being a craftsman who can work on metalwork and woodwork and glasswork for that matter, as you can see from the fact that they built the coffin for her. And actually there were, uh, there was a cut scene in Snow White and Seven Dwarfs that indicated that they were going to make her a bed as well. They were going to make, build her a full size bed so that she wouldn't have to sleep in their beds. That was a scene that was unfortunately cut from the film, but it, it goes to show it, that was actually part of the original story as well. So 
for Peter Dinklage to say that these dwarves are negatively stereotyped, I would like to say negatively stereotyped in what way? Considering the time period that this film is set and the location and what used to happen to dwarves, what exactly is so stereotypical about them? They're free men, amazing craftsmen who work together, are completely independent, they have an amazing source of income. What exactly is so stereotypical about them? I might point out office jobs in this day and age don't exist. Acting jobs, actually acting jobs probably did exist for them, but they would have been put into freak shows. So um, yeah, I would say if that had been a storyline part of it, that would have been very stereotypical and it would have been, a, that would have been a negative thing. The only rich dwarves of the time period would have been people who were sent to royal courts and you know, nobility houses in order to be considered tokens of entertainment, sources of amusement for the courts, and they probably would have done tricks. I might point out, again, talking about Warwick Davis, actually, Warwick Davis himself has actually played that stereotype. He has actually played a court jester in Gulliver's Travels. If any of you have seen this Gulliver's Travels film, you will probably know that Warwick Davis himself has played a stereotypical court jester dwarf. And actually, in that story, he is so proud of his position that he tries to kill Gulliver. He hates the fact that he's lost his position in the court because he knows that if he's disregarded as the court jester, then suddenly he loses his wealth, he loses his status, he loses the respect of the court. I might point out this is an exception to the reality of what dwarves would go through because of the fact that, you know, this fictional kingdom here, the nobility were meant to be actually quite nice people, which is in itself a, a false stereotype of nobility and royalty of this time period. So you could say, actually, you know, this is quite an exception to the rule of reality. I'm, I'm sure probably there are some dwarves in, in, in reality that did enjoy being court jesters because it meant that they were out of doing physical manual labor. They probably would have otherwise been sent down into mines unwillingly. But, uh, you know, for seven men, seven little people, to get together, to not have a master, to freely choose to go mining for gems, which they could then sell of their own accord, and to then have the skills to be able to build a house, craft their own furnishings, craft Snow White a bed, craft her coffin. They're very skilled men. A lot of people nowadays probably would look up to them as amazing role models for craftsmen. So I don't see anything negative in that. I really don't. There is nothing negative in this portrayal of the dwarves. And I just don't see how it is a positive thing to deny seven actors the potential to play these amazing roles that are actually good roles. They're not negatively stereotyped, they're actually very good roles. And I just don't understand what he sees as negative. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure that he actually believes what he's saying. I think he just jumped on the bandwagon of, I'm going to be progressive and claim to fight for uh, my people's rights, but it's like, you're not fighting for your people's rights. You're denying your people opportunities. How is that a good thing? How is it a good thing? I have not seen a single film where a dwarf was treated with contempt, abused, or any of that, where they haven't been able and capable of defending themselves either intellectually as well as physically. I mean, let's let's just take this film here, Freaks, for example, 
And that's a story about some circus freaks who, within their circle, within their own circle of um, workers, is this acrobatic dancer who, I don't know what you call them, They she swings off, what do you call them, those poles. I forget what they call them, I'll put, put the word up here somewhere. But she realises that this particular dwarf here, who is engaged to another dwarf, I might say, uh, quite happily, he sort of becomes besotted with this uh, acrobatic dancer, and uh, she then manipulates him when she realises that he's actually quite wealthy. He's very wealthy because of the fact that he's saved up all the money from the circus that he worked in. That's a stereotype, I might say. That's a stereotype of the dwarf because of the fact that he's, uh, he's, he's portraying a freak in a circus. That's a stereotype. But it goes to show that they could make a lot of money. And she then manipulates him into breaking up with his fiance, becoming engaged to her, marrying her, and then she tries to poison him, to kill him, simply so that she can then inherit his fortune. Here in this story, he's smart enough to realize this, and she does humiliate him on the, on their wedding night when when he's celebrating with his friends. They they start chanting this this chant, which freaks her out. No pun intended in the term there, but she she gets a bit freaked out by by this chant that they start chanting, and she then goes into a into a mad sort of drunken rage, and she then starts to humiliate him. So that is very stereotypical, I would say. That's a very stereotypical, but it also shows in this film that little people are not going to stand for that. They stand up for themselves. They, they do something pretty horrible to her as a form of revenge for what she tries to do to this poor guy. And in the end, he's so humiliated, he doesn't even want to see his friends. And it's, very, it's a very sort of bittersweet ending because his, his old fiancé comes back and she forgives him for what he, what he did but she, because she realises that it's not his fault. He was manipulated and cheated and she forgives him and in the end it's, it's a very bittersweet ending where she's just holding him and comforting him um, because he doesn't know what to do with himself because he's so humiliated. And his wealth doesn't mean anything because of because of how unhappy he is. So that to me is a is a film that shows a stereotype of a dwarf. That's a stereotype of a dwarf. But it also goes to show that he is actually a very intelligent man. He's a very intelligent man who unfortunately was duped because of his lust shall we say his lust for somebody who he considered to be beautiful but she turned out to be a really nasty person so i'd say that's a that's a positive for that film but it in a way it does show a sort of slight negative to it but it doesn't diminish my enjoyment of it because of the fact that they get their own back but a, a lot of the, a lot of the people who worked in that film afterwards never went back to working in film because they just, you know, it was a one-time gig for them and they just didn't really care for it after that because they weren't prepared to become sort of regular hires for film because they didn't want to be in the limelight after that. So, you know what? That's up to them. And I say good on them. They, they, make, they made the choice to agree to, to work in the film and after their experience they decided they didn't want to do it after that. So. And actually, that actor was also in The Wizard of Oz. He was one of the uh, munchkins. He was actually this munchkin here in this trio of the Lollipop Guild. And uh, he said that his, his experiences of the working on these two films actually saved his life because of the fact that he was around during uh, the, the start of the, the Second World War. And he said that if he hadn't moved to America to pursue this career, he might well have ended up in Auschwitz and being either shot or gassed because of what he was. And I think a lot of dwarfs were in that situation. So they have Hollywood to thank for the fact that they were still alive. So for Peter Dinklage to say no dwarf should ever be given these sort of roles, it's like you have no idea what doing this could do for someone. You could literally be saving their life. For all he knows, there's probably a whole bunch of like homeless dwarfs who, if they had taken these roles, might have saved their lives. Who knows? 
Who knows? But he d he went and sought and thought it was a, a good idea to deny them these opportunities because he thought it was stereotypical. And frankly, I think that's just absolutely pathetic of him. It just makes him seem incredibly selfish, self-centered, and narrow-minded. He doesn't know anything about the history of dwarves in, in Hollywood or in cinema or even in fiction for that matter. He hasn't done his research. He's just jumped to a, a false conclusion simply so he can sound righteous and seem like he's standing up for dwarves' rights when he's completely the opposite. So frankly, I'm not impressed with him. I think he's an absolute hypocrite who needs to apologize for what he said. He needs to educate himself on the, the, the true history of dwarfism in Hollywood and through history and sort of understand that these opportunities, it, it's, it's a positive thing for them. It's not a negative thing for them. If other dwarves find it offensive, then so be it. But I personally don't see how this argument that he puts forward has any relevance because he, it just goes to show that he's ignorant and narrow-minded and a hypocrite. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not impressed with this. And I don't think a lot of people were. And now I've seen a couple of interviews with people who said, who said that, you know, that they're not impressed with him. Here's a dwarf who did an interview. He's, he's apparently, he works in, in the wrestling ring. And he played a stereotypical elf, should I say, in that. It, he he thought it was uh, absolutely disgraceful that uh, Peter Dinklage said what he said. And he, he said so when he was interviewed on the Piers Morgan show. He tried to argue against this rather hilarious clown here who made absolutely no sense in his arguments. He didn't have an argument. He ended up sort of uh, contradicting himself in his own argument, which was hilarious to watch. And then here's, a, here's another dwarf that um, was asked if he found it offensive that dwarves were being portrayed as dwarves. And he, he said he wasn't at all offended by it. And he thought it was ridiculous. So there you go. That's just another sort of indication that Peter Dinklage just doesn't know what he's talking about. And he jumped to a stereotypical conclusion. And frankly, I think he's just, he just needs to apologize for being so narrow-minded and ignorant. And he should now advocate for the dwarves to go back into the film. Because I think it's a shame that seven people were, or should I say six, seeing as we have got one dwarf, should be permitted to play these roles. They should refilm any of the dwarf scenes, get rid of the magical creature nonsense and just and put the dwarves back. Hell, I would advocate for them to to do something completely different they could have an entire they could they could pull a uh, a sort of wizard of oz moment where the seven dwarves are just like the gatekeepers to an entire community of dwarves that snow white joins so she actually she goes through them and she finds somewhere deeper in the woods that there is actually this huge community of dwarves i would happily accept that for a for an additional change to Snow White. So it's not just seven dwarves, it's like Snow White and the 70 dwarves. I would happily accept that for a change. That would be a very progressive move. That would be a really progressive move. We're not just gonna give seven dwarves a, uh, a role in this. We're gonna give her an entire army of dwarves, 70 dwarves. That would be absolutely a brilliant sort of move to sort of say that, you know, we're really behind dwarves and we really want to give them lots of uh, opportunities to take these roles. So, you know what? Ho uh, Hollywood, you missed out on a really big opportunity there. It's a shame that they didn't take it on. So, anyway guys, I'm gonna leave it there for today. I still have that Snow White review to come out, so stay tuned if you want to see that, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye!